Hey everyone, this is Zach Zan and you're watching Zazz Zaz TV, the show that brings you a dash of passion to the perfect blend of ingredients for your success in business and in life. If you don't know, July this month, we're actually celebrating heroes um, at Zest Zest TV. Um, I know many of you are probably, you know, our fans in social media, and uh, you know, and we have been putting out a lot of stuff on social media. We wanted to celebrate heroes because July is all about independence and all about freedom. People, um, you know, ordinary people taking, um, you know, uh, things into their own hands and making their lives better, and you know, trying to transform their lives for the better. So um, this this evening, I actually have uh, a gentleman right here with me who happens to be our hero, I think, uh, because we at Zazaz TV think that heroes are just not soldiers who go out and fight wars or superheroes in capes, you know. Heroes can also be ordinary people who have maybe experiences or um, accomplished success um, tr uh, greatly because, you know, um, they've decided to make a change in their lives. And Mike Jaffe right here with me is one of those people because he happens to be a 9-11 survivor who decided one morning, just because one decision he made that morning, saved his life and he lived to tell us the story. So welcome, Mike. Thank, Thank you, you very much, sir. Thank you for doing this with us today. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here. So Mike, I've been watching your videos, you know, um, mm -hmm. on uh, on YouTube and online on your website. You know, of course, we had to research you to get you on our show. <laughs> but you know what? One thing was apparent about uh, all your videos. Each time you tell us your story, I'm like, I get goosebumps, you know. And I think you'll tell your story today uh, here, and I'm sure some of our live guests here would also um, get to experience that goosebumps that I personally felt when I watched those videos. So tell me, you have a book called yes. um, Wake Up. Your Life is Calling. Life Why is settle for fine when <laughs> so much more is possible? So tell me, what inspired you to write it? I mean, there must be a reason that, uh, you know, you wrote it. And I really want to hear the real story, what inspired you to rewrite this book. Well, the real story is that I know so many people that want to make changes in their life. Mm -hmm. Just like you said, yeah. right? Independence, freedom. But they get stuck and they get in their own way. Yeah. And all of these dreams that they have, all of these great intentions just float away. And after I've experienced what I went through, and I'll share about that story when, when it's time, um, it really became my mission to try to serve as what I call a human wake up call, mm -hmm. to try to wake people up, to say that any time is the perfect time to make that transformation, but it doesn't mean it's easy. And there's definitely a formula, a way that you can approach it yes. that'll make it happen. And so this book really lays out kind of like a, a, a roadmap to change, okay. five main sections mm -hmm. that can help take people from intention into action, into transformation. That's the book. Um, Why don't you show um, it? It would be. You know, I Mike Jaffe, Wake Up, uh, Your Life is Calling. This is a powerful book. I think there are five components in here that you talk about. What are they? It starts with perspective. Okay. Everything starts with perspective because um, you don't have access to even understanding what the difference is or what's possible unless you have a shift in perspective. Right. Then it goes to purpose. So you need to know your why, mm. right? So yeah. once you have the shift in perspective, now there's possibility. Now you need to know why and, and what direction you want to head in. And once you have a sense of that, then it's time to play. And what playing we does- We must play a little. We have to play a lot. Yeah. And the reason <laughs> is because you don't know until you do something. Right? To know without doing is not to know. Right, sure. So you have to do something, but you don't have to fully commit. You don't have to jump into the deep end right away. You may think you want to open up a bed and breakfast until you get there and you talk with owners and you experience it for a weekend and you realize that means I'm going to have strangers in my house all the time and I'm not going to be able to take any holidays off. <laughs> not for me, but you might not have known that until you experience something. So we have to get it from here out into here. Right. That's what playing does. And then there's planning. Once you finally really know what you want, then you plan. You take this big idea and you break it down into manageable chunks. 
And then finally, it's persist. Patience, support say. structure, yeah. right? Even the Lone Ranger and Tonto, <laughs> with big movie coming out now. Um, you need to create the environment around you that's going to help you take those steps, even very when true. all you want to do is run back towards comfortable. Very true. And I think persist is very important because that's where it's either you make it or you break it. Because if you do give up after couple of trials and you go, ah, oh, it's not for me. Well, probably they've not wait, uh, I mean, they've not wait long enough to discover if it is for them, you know? So um, I like to hear you says, why settle for fine when so much more is possible? So I know your story a little bit about 9-11. Yes. Um, maybe you can tell us a little bit about that story because I can guarantee to each and every one of you out there who actually, you know, are our live audiences or maybe you're watching as a, um, record our recorded show mm. each time I hear his, Mike telling his story this particular story that I'm asking him to tell I get goosebumps because I think about you know what if what if you know that same morning he did not make this decision what if you know I'm getting goosebumps so you know um so tell us a little bit about that because I'm sure that has uh, a little bit to do with your book oh it has a lot to do with the book um but really it's about the bigger message. Mm -hmm. So for me, life was fine. I had a good job. I was working in corporate. Uh, I had a, a beautiful life. Mm -hmm. My daughter was one. We yeah. had just moved to Fairfield County, Connecticut. Mm -hmm. And my commute changed because we had lived in the city prior to that. So now my commute became two hours each way. Wow, that's a long way. <laughs> it is, but you know, when you live where we live and you look around and you see everybody else doing that, that becomes normal. Yeah. Right? We kind of define normal by what we see around us. Very true. And there were many people for 30, 40 years doing this commute. So who was I to complain about it? When other people, you, know, you suck it up, you do what you need to do, you provide for your family. Very true, because we also become complacent. And we become complacent Pay and we, we are afraid of the unknown and we don't see any other way out. So we feel stuck. Yes. You know, but we also have these needs and these responsibilities. So how can we be reckless and irresponsible and just change something when it's going to impact others. We can't. Right. So we feel very, very stuck where we are. And I remember this days became weeks became months. And the problem was I'd come home at night. My daughter would be sleeping. I'd leave in the morning. My daughter would be sleeping. <laughs> and so I would never see her awake during the week. And even in the weekends, you know how when something great happens, yeah. right? We want that energy to spill all over all the parts of our lives. Yeah. Well, when something challenging, when you're stressed, when you're resentful, that also spills. And that's what was happening to me. So even when I had time on the weekend, I wasn't taking advantage of that time. I was still stuck looking back saying, why is this happening to me? I hate this whole aspect of my life. Yeah. It's fine, but it's not what I want, True. but I don't know what to do about it. And, and many people out there are just like that too. Absolutely. And we get stuck in upset. We're unhappy, but we don't right. know what to do. Or if we have an idea, we it don't know where feels, to start. If we don't know where to start. It's overwhelming. It feels a little bit too scary too risky right. to move towards anything. What if I lose what I already have? So we get stuck in this world, what I call a fine, right? Right. Because you know, when you're down here and you're in, let's say your life's a one or a two mm -hmm. and you're living in desperation, yeah. you're going to do something right. Because there's enough pain, there's enough awareness, enough cost that it forces you into action. When you're up here, that's inspiration. And there's enough momentum and courage and, conf and confidence and energy to get you into action. But when you're here, you're in stagnation. And that's the world of fine. When things are five or six, they're not bad enough to get you moving, but they're not good enough to really, truly be good enough. And so we get stuck in that complacent world. And then we start building walls around us to protect that. Because now we don't want to lose what we have. What if, what if we go down instead of up? Yeah. And so we give up a lot of our dreams or we, we, we just stagnate there. And that was happening to me, except Finally, the cost of seeing, not seeing my daughter awake mm -hmm. broke through mm. and I was sitting outside and it, you know how noisy it is, right? Yeah. It, even in here, it's so noisy, yeah, right? Yeah, it does. <laughs> you have to get away from the noise. I cleared it out. I sat outside and I just thought, all right, no one is going to do this for me. I need to own this. And that was an important starting point. I really had to get clear that I owned it. Mm. it wasn't anybody else's fault because I had been blaming everybody. My boss, my company, my commute. It's easier, easier to do that. Absolutely. Yeah. They're all wrong. It makes me right. <laughs> exactly. It justifies exactly. me where I am. That's really right. True. I get to play, you know, a victim. It's just like, you know, you're pointing the finger at somebody, but the three other fingers pointing back to you. That's yeah. right. Exactly <laughs> yeah. right. You know, and there's no power there. You Absolutely. are choosing to be a victim. I was choosing to be a victim. 
And when I really got clear on what was most important to me, and I realized it was the values of love and family, and I realized that, you know what? What if we just had breakfast tomorrow morning? What if we had breakfast? I mean, I don't have a meeting. I'm not going to be irresponsible. I'll just come in 20 minutes later than normal. I'll just take the next train. No big deal. Just one day. I mean, no big deal. Right. 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 And, you know, it was weird. Like, as soon as I made that decision, something clicked in me that I had taken control back. I had owned it. And I called my wife and I said, guess what? She goes, what? I said, we're going to have breakfast tomorrow. And she says, that's nice. I awesome. Said, no, we're going to have breakfast. She's like, whatever you want, honey. <laughs> you know? But I felt great. And the other interesting thing was I went back to my desk. That went, same morning. That same afternoon. Okay. And everything had changed. It wasn't the work that I was doing that changed, but it was my relationship to it because I was no longer a victim of it. Right. And that afternoon, I didn't suffer. I realized I had been sabotaging myself. I had been making me suffer. And when I shifted that perspective, everything was actually good. And I go home and I felt great. And I wake up the next morning and you know, our rituals, our habits are so strong. I put on my suit. I'm ready to go at my normal time. My wife comes out and she says, oh, I thought we were going to have breakfast, but you can make your train. You want me to take right. it to your train? Right. And there I stood at my crossroads, not knowing it. Do I go or do I have breakfast? Do I go? Or and the little voices, voices the noise, man. You're going to be late. You're going to be late, Mike. Exactly right. Like, don't. Right. Good idea. You know, you, <laughs> but your daughter's one. She's not even going to know that you had this breakfast. You know, right. it was mm -hmm. good for you, but go to work. What are you, what are you doing? Right. You know, but then the other voice is saying, no, remember what's important to you. If, if not now, then when? Right. And so this tug of war was going on and I just did, I just had to stop and I had to let go of the rope and I stood in space. Again, space is so important. And I looked up and I saw my family and it became really clear, you know, what was most important to me. And I said, you know what? The whole point was to have breakfast. Let's have breakfast. And so we had this simple little nothing breakfast. I just, but I felt so good, you know, and I went on the train and I was beaming and shining. I mean, I shine a lot, obviously. <laughs> and I'm shining, and I'm looking at these other people on this later train, and you could just see the unhappiness, how maybe the commute or their life or their being a victim right. is sucking the vitality right after. I know I said, how that I is not because be that sometimes when we go on the train, I see, see people, yes. you know, just like a cloud just over their heads, just because they know, like, mm -hmm. I'm going to work this morning, but Who's I don't choosing want to. it. Yeah, they are. We should make all the choices for ourselves. Exactly. Sometimes it doesn't feel like a choice, but it's always a choice. Yes. But there are consequences for our choices, right? And sometimes yes. we don't really focus on the cost. Yes. We just do what we do because that's what we do. Yeah. Keeps us safe and keeps us in that nice little comfortable world of fun. Right. Right. Well, that day was different because I looked around and I said, I'm never going to be that person again. I'm going to make sure that I appreciate and acknowledge, you know, what I do have in my life. And because I was in, because we had that breakfast, I was still in the subway when the first plane slammed into the World Trade Center and actually hit my desk. Oh my God. It hit my floor, it hit my desk, because the morning I had breakfast just happened to be September 11th, 2001. See Mike, I truly believe that was your reason for still being here with us today, because you had a bigger mission. You were put out here, you're a hero for many of us right now because I think that morning that right shoulder person said, hey, just have breakfast, you know, stretch it out a little bit because, you know, um, sometimes I truly feel that we are here on earth to do bigger things and probably your path was, you know, designed for that. And thank you. Thank you for making that decision because now you get to go out there and live your life and actually empower others to do what you do today too well thank you i have a different take on it okay all right I but i appreciate that. but i appreciate that okay you know what's really important is i knew all those people up there and people used to tell me yes you have an angel on your shoulder or there's plans for you but as nice as that is to feel special i cannot accept any of that because you know what Everyone that was up there was and just, was us. Yep. Well, they're us. Yep. I'm no more special than them, yep. right? We are exactly. all survivors, every one of us, every day. True. And what's really important is that 9-11, surviving that experience obviously had a huge impact on my life. But what was the most important thing is that I had my wake up call on September 10th, on a mm. day that looked like any other day, any other day, a day that looks like today, I just made a different choice. I got back in touch with what was most important to me 
and I created a new intention that was aligned with what I stood for. And when it was time to either take a step or not take a step, mm -hmm. in this case, I took I the step. The and that's the difference because I want everyone in here to get and everyone on there to get that everything we're talking about is within access. You already have everything you need to get started. You know, we all need to play bigger in our lives, yeah. but we need to know what that looks like. It doesn't mean busier. It doesn't necessarily mean more, right? It mm -hmm. just means bigger. It means getting out of your comfort zone. There you go. Okay. So yes, it gave me the tools and the experience and the perspective that were tools for me to be able to do that. That's why I want to help others. Not because they need to be chosen or they need to be heroes because right. we all are. Yes. because it's possible for everybody and that I is why i wrote this book too. absolutely and i think each and every one of us need to make our own journey and discover that hero within yes because again heroes are really not soldiers you know going out there or mm -hmm. firefighters you know saving lives from the fire really heroes are really what you make yourself to be and you know take charge of your destiny take charge of your own life and make your tomorrow a better tomorrow you know and it's it's not always easy because you have to fight your demons daily whether you do it well or not, you know, sometimes I think we all need support systems and, you know, people Absolutely. around us, you know, the positive environment to help us do what we need to do. Well, that's that's part of the, the fifth step, which is in the book, which is called Persist. Mm -hmm. And it is about creating the support environment around you because it is hard to do this on your own. Sure. You want to use other people and they never own it. You <laughs> always own it. Otherwise, you're being a victim. Absolutely. Again. But it doesn't mean they can't hold you accountable to yourself. That's why coaching is so powerful because coaching is somebody who's going to help you get out of your own way and hold you accountable to yourself, but never owns it for you. That's the magic of coaching. And it's always rewarding and the feeling is always, um, you know, exhilarating when you've accomplished that goal and that success because you knew, you know that you actually put your, you know, heart and soul, your blood, sweat and tears into it. And then when you achieve that success, it's so rewarding and you shine. Well, that's because you got out of your comfort zone, right? Because right. that's what growth looks like. So here, here's the story about growth. So, so pretend you're at on a platform that's 40 or 50 feet high. You know, when you're looking down at that pool and it feels really high up there, <laughs> right? But you know you have to jump into that pool and you're just looking down there and the fear of the unknown, the fear of getting all of the fears, all of the demons, all of the truths start to come out. And these are all the things that you usually use to justify and validate why you're not going to take that step. So you need to summon up courage. You know, not 20 seconds of insane courage like they say in the movie, <laughs> just five seconds of ordinary everyday courage. Step off the platform and don't judge how you're going to be. And you jump and you're falling, you're falling, you're falling, and then boom, you hit the water. And you're disoriented. You have to fall enough. Well, what happens is the first time, you, you just don't know what it feels like. Am I alive? Am I good? Am I, did I break? Right. No, I, I survived this thing, but my feet hurt. Hmm, I better point my toes next time <laughs> and so you climb back up right. now is the fear gone when you're up there absolutely not but it's a tiny bit less because now you have a history you said you know what I know I can do this I've done this before but it's still scary right. and people give up at that point but Very it's still true. scary so now you have to do it again and you just think point my toes point my toes point my toes boom you hit the ground you hit the water not the ground <laughs> right hopefully <laughs> yeah not the, not the ground and you hit the water and this time you're, you're a little more comfortable you said, all right, you know what, I can do this. Now pretend for the next hour, 40 more times, you're climbing up that platform and you're jumping off. Now by the 40th time, when you're standing looking over at that water, how much courage do you need? None. Yes. Because it's transformed into something way more powerful, confidence. But people wait until they're confident to do something and it doesn't work that way. You get confident by doing something. And so you have to redefine success to allow yourself to fall down, to allow yourself to get out of that comfort zone, to allow yourself to really suck at something. Yeah, absolutely. 40 times. Yes. And then you can say, you know what, I'm going to work on my form now, but not till the 40th time. Otherwise, you stop yourself from ever getting started. And that's what people do. We have all these intentions. We have all these great ideas, but we never get started. Or if we do, 
we run right back to where it's comfortable because it's scary out there. Very true, very true. And talking about scary, you know, um, every business owner out there, when they want to start something new, you know, they go like, oh, this is scary, you know, and um, this is too much work because I have to do it all on my own. You know, what would you say your biggest challenge was uh, when you started a business and how did you overcome that? Because I believe people need to know, yeah. uh, just like our lives, you have to just jump it, you know, and just do it because just like Nike says, I like, just do it because unless and until you just do it, you will never know if you yeah. could. Two so things. is that how you started your business? Well, two things. Mm -hmm. When I first started my business, I went on pure faith. I knew I was meant to be a coach when I discovered that world. See, after 9-11, I still did what I did there. But I didn't I didn't even know what coaching was. I never had a vision for my career. So I never knew what direction to head in. That's why I just floated down the river. But then a year and a half later, someone said to me, you'd be a great coach. And I said, yeah, when my daughter gets older, I'll coach her soccer team. Or so I said, no, 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 a life coach, a business coach. What is that? And this was probably in 2003. And normally I would have been, hey, thanks, that's a nice compliment. you know. Right. And I just would have gone about my business. But because of the experience I had, because of this perspective I carried around with me, I said, you know what, I better go and look this up. And I went up and I researched it. And a whole world just opened up. Just, that was always there, but was never there for me. So it didn't exist for me. So it's like diamond in the rough, you know? It's a, it's a porthole into a world that a new world that I discovered that was never there for me before. So whenever I had tried to figure out what was possible, that didn't exist. Because there's so much that we don't even know that we don't even know is what what's possible. So we need to be discoverers, we need to be adventurers in our life to go find these worlds because what you think doesn't fit right now, right. there may be something out there very, very close to where you are. Mm -hmm. That would be ideal. The two hardest things for me. One was having a vision, mm. right? Having a vision because I had no idea what direction to head in. And when you're trying to make a change, there's two forces. There's a push force and there's a pull force because the bridge of change is not a nice little paved bridge with an easy pass, no. right? It's one of these, what I call a rickety bridge right. with the wooden planks and the yeah, rope handles tiptoe and it. it's swaying in the wind <laughs> and it's really far down. Right. And you have to know why you need to get to the, you need to know your why. The why yes. That's the pull. You need something compelling that's going to get you to the other side. It can't just be a push moving away from something. You have to have that push and that pull. So understanding that it doesn't have to be 100% clear, but you have to have a sense of your why. Absolutely. Okay, so that's some, and the other one is time. Time is our most precious currency and it's so easy. There's no game plan, right? Yeah. There's no playbook when you own your own business. Yes. It's so easy to waste and pursuing things that are off plan. Right. Just, you have to stay focused, you have to know your vision, and you have to just keep plugging away every day and try to not waste a lot of your time and resources pursuing the shiny objects. I think that's typically the same for any kind of business. You mm -hmm. know, you just need to have your focus. You know, you have to have your why. Because the why, folks, is what makes you wake up at three in the morning mm -hmm. to catch that flight to Chicago. That's right. You know, and yeah. go like, oh, I wouldn't do this if I was working in corporate. I, I, well, many people wouldn't do it if their own business. Because I've seen this sometimes. If they had to work in corporate America, they would do it anyway because you know they know what was at stake you know and that's why um, I always tell people have your why because if you don't have your why if tomorrow it storms or tomorrow it snows and you go like oh I'm not gonna catch that fly you know so but yeah right. absolutely well, right about why that's the difference of 100% commitment and 99% commitment so when you're 100% committed to something it feels like there is no choice. Mm -hmm. There's always a choice. But when you're so committed to something, like if your kids were screaming in the middle of the night, are you gonna get up and see what's going on? Of course you are. Yes. But is that a choice you're making? Yeah, it is. Even though you might say, well, of course I'm gonna get, that's what 100% commitment looks like. Almost like there is no choice. Yeah. When you're in a job and there's a real consequence of you not doing it mm -hmm. that's defined, you're gonna do it, but it's really a choice you're still making. Yes. When you have to account to yourself, we give ourselves way too much wiggle room. I know. <laughs> and so we need to create that support and accountability structure so that we still make sure that we're 100% committed because now we're doing it for ourselves. Why are we letting ourselves off the hook? And if it's not the right choice, then we have to really reconsider what the cost and benefit is that we're trying to create here. Maybe we need to change our vision. Very true.
Very true. Well, I mean, uh, what we've discussed here tonight has been really great. You know, it's a lot of information, a lot of content that many of you out there can just take any part of this conversation and just run with it. Because having a business, because that's just TV is all about, you know, uh, for, um, we focus on success stories. Business owners who are passionate to um, own success, you know, and however little that success may be. So I want to take this opportunity to thank you for being here with us today because just hearing your story, I'm sure you've been inspired and empowered somebody out there to maybe start their own business or just do something that they have been putting back in the back burner for a long time you I know so. trying to discover their own passion you know in order to achieve success maybe you can tell us you know how they would get your book if they want to find uh, on the purchase your book is there an electronic uh, option for it yeah there is there's um there's obviously the hard and soft covers of the book you can get everything from my website at humanwakeupcall.com okay and on the website i also uh, if you register you get a seven step free audio course okay. how to design and live an extraordinary life awesome. um, and there's a PDF version of it and I'm working on an audiobook version of it now which we I'm love not, that we love I that. don't know when that'll be ready hopefully later this year For many of you who do not like to read <laughs> exactly exactly but everything is at humanwakeupcall.com okay great thank you Mike Jeffy for being with us today very much thank you welcome my honor so again, thank you. Thank you, Mike Jaffe, for you know taking time out of your busy schedule to be with us uh, to do this video, to share your journey, and also tell us your story. Because I am certain that many, many people out there, you know, who's watching this video today, find your story to be empowering and inspiring. Um, and that's what we want to do here at Zevzaz TV, you know, sharing um, the passion of others and, you know, people who are passionate about success itself well thank you everyone for watching this is zaf zen and you're watching zaf zaz tv the show that brings you a dash of passion to the perfect plan of ingredients for your success in business and in life we'll see you in the next episode of zaf zaz tv bye bye everybody